In today's video, we head up to Washington State to get our first look at our new house currently under construction. It's our dream house where we'll live after I retire at the end of this summer. I'll give you a good look around. Also, I'll show you what it's like to fly during a global pandemic. Airplanes and airports are pretty empty right now. And finally, I'll share some of the most spectacular time-lapse videos I've ever shot. Some pretty great footage from a couple of flights we took between our current home and our future home. The lead story today is definitely the construction of our dream house. Construction began in mid-January, and up until now we've only seen it in still photos sent to us by our real estate agent. But over the weekend, we flew up to Washington for a meeting with the builder, and it was a real thrill for us to finally get a look at our new house in this brand new neighborhood. We've got a big half-acre lot, and we're only about 1,200 feet away from the Columbia River. Construction has really been moving along. We're about two months into construction at this point, and there's about two more months to go. All the plumbing and electrical and HVAC ducting was installed recently. The insulation was put in, and as you can see, the drywall has been put up. In fact, just a few hours after I shot this video, they started priming the drywall for painting. So let me give you a tour of the house. We'll just start right here out in front of the house. You can see that there's a big covered porch out in front that leads to the front door. And then as we head inside, this is the entryway just beyond the front door, and it leads you to the great room. A big open concept living room, kitchen, and breakfast nook combination. One of the things we're trying to accomplish with this house is to gain a lot more space. The house we currently live in is just 1,200 square feet total. This great room in our dream house, just this one room, is 745 square feet. And the whole house altogether is about 2,700 square feet. Where those pipes come out of the floor there, that's going to be an island in the kitchen. And you just have to imagine this whole area you see here with cabinetry. That's our kitchen. We've designed lots of extra cabinet space in so that we'll have plenty of storage. And that little doorway off the kitchen that leads to a pantry that'll be lined with shelves, providing lots more storage. To the left of the fireplace, that big wall there is going to be my TV wall, a perfect place for my big 80 inch TV, plus all the associated audio and video equipment. That doorway directly off the great room leads to what will be my office. That's where I'll have my desk with my computer, where I'll do all my video editing. And from that window, I'll see anyone that comes up to the front door and whatever is happening out on the street. This is the part of the house that my wife, Kellen, is most excited about. It's her craft room, with plenty of room for her sewing, embroidery, and quilting equipment. Plus, her computer workstation hooked up to a super high-speed fiber optic internet connection. Over in that L-shaped corner of the room, that's where her exercise bike will be. At our current home, all of Kellen's sewing and quilting and embroidery stuff is crammed into a 100 square foot room. Here in our dream house, this craft room is an amazing 400 square foot space. Plus it has its own bathroom and a sliding door that leads out to the backyard. More about that backyard a little later. I'm excited about the garage with individual doors for Kellen's car and my car. Plus, over on the side of the house next to the garage, this entire area will be paved with cement so that I can park my car over there if I want to use the garage for some big model train layout. And speaking of model trains, here's the most unusual feature of the entire house. That is not a doggy door. That is a door for model trains. It's right next to the door that leads from the garage to the side yard. It's just the right width for two model trains to run in and out, and just the right height for the trains to have a GoPro mounted on top. 
but it'll seal up nice and tight to keep the weather out when the trains aren't running. It's a big garage with a lot of space to work with, way bigger than any garage I've ever had at any previous house. This is the master bedroom. An important feature of the room is a big sliding glass door that leads to the backyard. This is south facing, so it'll get a lot of morning light. Some people would hate that, but Kellen and I are morning people, so we will love it. We picked this lot and this bedroom location specifically for that morning light coming in through the window. There will be blackout curtains for any mornings where we decide to sleep in. A very important thing to know about that sliding glass door in the master bedroom is that located just to the left as you walk outside is going to be a big hot tub. And don't worry, there will be a fence and a line of trees to create some privacy between us and the neighbors. Right off the master bedroom will be the master bathroom. It doesn't look like much at this point without any cabinetry or lighting. There is a big walk-in closet that's more than double the size of our current one. But our favorite feature in the master bathroom is a walk-in shower. No door or shower curtain needed. It'll have a rainfall shower head up on the ceiling, as well as a second shower head on the wall. There are also two other rooms in the house and a guest bathroom. We'll be using one of the rooms as a guest bedroom, and the other is going to be kind of a storage room for me where I'll keep photography equipment and things like that. A little earlier, I showed you this shot walking out the sliding glass door that leads to our backyard. Look at the size of that yard, the vast distance to that block wall fence that is our property line. Here it is from the opposite angle, as seen from the fence, looking towards the house. That is a huge backyard. Being able to get a half-acre lot was a big selling point for this neighborhood. This side of the house, the back side, all faces south, so there's going to be lots of sunshine back here. That covered back porch will provide some much-needed shade in the summertime. There will be block wall fencing installed around the entire backyard. It just hasn't been put in yet. I'm going to line three sides of that backyard with shade trees. And there's also going to be a cement path encircling the entire yard, which is going to make a great place to run a very long set of model train tracks. Trains or people will be able to get from the back patio into the house through that little door there. Or there's also these sliding doors that lead into the master bedroom. And don't forget there will be a big hot tub right there. I'll be spending a lot of time there. Okay, that's the house tour, with construction about 50% complete at this point. But there is a lot more to come in this video. Our dream house here in southeastern Washington state is about a thousand miles away from where we live now. Getting here for this little visit during a global pandemic was quite an adventure. I'll tell you all about that in a minute and share a couple of incredible time-lapse videos that I shot during our flights up and back. That's all coming up right after this. Kellen and I have done a lot of flying in recent years, but flying during a global pandemic was unlike all the other flying experiences we've had. People were wearing masks, and the airports and airplanes were about as close to empty as you could get without the airlines having to actually just go completely out of business. The airport here in my current hometown is served by these little Canada Air Regional Jets, as is the airport up in my future hometown in Washington. These aircraft seat 50 passengers, and I think we only had about 10 in this one. There isn't a non-stop flight between my local airport here in California and the one in my new town in Washington, so we usually book flights that connect in San Francisco. I hope you can overlook the scratches on the window of the plane in this little video clip I shot as we took off from our little regional airport in San Luis Obispo, California. It's good to see the green hills this time of year. We haven't had enough rain to fill the reservoirs, but at least we've had enough to green up the hillsides.
This was a particularly scenic part of our flight. This is Moss Landing along the California coast between Monterey and Santa Cruz. And here's an interesting sight. As we were landing at San Francisco International Airport, I'm going to pause it here for just a second. If you're watching on a cell phone screen, you're not going to see it. But on a big enough computer screen, you might barely be able to see a ship anchored out in the bay. That was the Grand Princess that recently ran into trouble with the coronavirus and had to circle just outside of San Francisco Bay for a couple of days until the state government and the feds all put a plan in place to deal with the passengers from that ship. We had about an hour layover in San Francisco before our flight to Washington. I like airplanes, so I can easily spend an hour watching them from the window of an airport. This was interesting. This is an Airbus A320 arriving at the gate I happened to be relaxing at. After it arrived and the passengers all disembarked, I got curious after seeing how few people had been on the plane I was just on, so I just hung around the gate area as they were boarding the passengers for the next flight, and I started counting how many passengers got on board. This A320 aircraft has a capacity of 150 passengers. I watched the entire boarding process from start to finish and saw nine passengers get on board. That was it. Just nine on that big airplane. I felt like I was watching a global pandemic wipe out the entire airline industry right in front of my eyes. Anyway, I like airplanes and I like to fly. In going between California and Washington and coming back again, we spent about seven hours in the air, all told, and that was okay with me. I'll show you a couple of beautiful parts of the flights. This is Mount Shasta up in Northern California, near the border with Oregon. It's a very beautiful site that just happens to be right along the path that the planes take between San Francisco and the little regional airport that we fly into in southeastern Washington. On our return flight, leaving Washington, I saw something I had never personally experienced before. De-icing of the wings. This was real early in the morning with the local temperature right around 32 degrees that morning. For a California boy that tends to mostly fly to Florida, it was an interesting new experience for me. On our return flight to San Francisco, this was a very pretty sight. That's the Point Reyes National Seashore, just north of San Francisco. Sir Francis Drake anchored here in 1579. I remember learning about it as a kid in school. Drake was known as a famous explorer of California. Later in life, I learned in Puerto Rico that they have an entirely different view of Drake in the Caribbean, where he is remembered as a pirate. This is another interesting sight as we approach the airport in San Francisco. It's the Crystal Springs Reservoir, just south of San Francisco. It's about six miles long, but very narrow, as you can see. And the reason for the unusual shape has to do with what's underneath it, the San Andreas Fault. I shot this time lapse out the window as we made our approach and landing at the San Francisco airport. This is not a particularly good time lapse, but if you stick with me for another minute, I'm going to show you one shortly that's one of the best I've ever made. Normally, from San Francisco, we would fly directly to the little regional airport near our house, but these are not normal times. With so few people flying during the pandemic, United Airlines ended up canceling the flight that we had booked to get us home from San Francisco. So to get home, we had to take a flight from San Francisco down to Los Angeles, where then we could get a flight to our local airport. The bad news was that this meant we'd get home about four hours later than we had planned. But the good news was that for our flight from San Francisco to Los Angeles, we were going to get to fly on a much bigger, much nicer airplane than we had expected to be on. We got to fly on the Boeing 757-300 that you see here, arriving at our gate to pick us up. Now, this is a big airplane with the capacity for 234 passengers, but I think there are only about 50 of us in it for this flight. The 757 had Wi-Fi and electrical outlets in each row, and noticeably more room between the rows than those darned Canadair regional jets that we typically fly in. So even though having to detour through Los Angeles was a bit of an inconvenience and a four-hour delay, 
I actually really enjoyed our flight on this United Airlines Boeing 757-300. As we look at the time-lapse video I shot on our takeoff from San Francisco, I'm going to pause it right here so you can see it better this time, and let's make this a pop quiz. Name that ship anchored there in San Francisco Bay. Okay, if you answered Grand Princess, you got it right. Our flight down the California coast started out quite pretty. This is a very nice view of the Santa Cruz area. But just south of that, the clouds took over and blocked the view for about the next 100 miles or so, which is too bad because that's a really beautiful part of the coast. But when the clouds finally did start to break up, I noticed some sites that were very familiar to me. It was San Luis Obispo County, which happens to be where I live. I could recognize the Oceano Dunes right there, which means my house was right there. And the other unmistakable landmark that told me exactly where I was, was this one right here. That's the Topaz Solar Farm in eastern San Luis Obispo County. Now it's time for something I've been promising since the beginning of this video. I think that what you're about to see is one of the best time-lapse videos I've ever made. It's the view out my window for the last 20 minutes of our flight into LAX, but in time-lapse format, it's only going to take you two minutes to watch it. Enjoy. We had a two-hour layover in Los Angeles, and that was more than enough time to have some lunch. You can see that even at lunchtime, it was completely uncrowded at LAX. Finally, it was time for our last flight of the day, a short flight up to San Luis Obispo. It certainly wasn't the most beautiful weather as we took off from LAX, but it's always an interesting view when you fly out of LAX, at least when the wind is blowing on shore which it usually does. Planes always take off into the wind, so that means that the planes usually take off over the water from LAX, and that is an interesting view. You can see Marina del Rey there, and in the background, Santa Monica. Our approach into San Luis Obispo was quite interesting. A storm was moving into the area. Not a big storm, but enough to produce some rain and a, even a few little rainbows. From our vantage point up near the clouds, the rain falling in the distance was an interesting sight. For the very first time in all the times I've landed here, we had to actually fly past San Luis Obispo and do a big U-turn to get oriented properly to land into the wind in San Luis Obispo. Because just like in Los Angeles, there's a direction that the wind normally blows most of the time, which means that there's a direction that the planes land most of the time. But with a storm coming in from the south, this wasn't a normal day. After having landed from the southeast many, many times, I got a kick out of finally landing from the northwest this time.
and we were certainly glad to be back home. Well, that was our trip. I'm Jim Zim, taking a little break from cruising for a while. I hope you enjoyed seeing a video on my channel about something a little different than model trains and cruise ships this time.